Um, tell me what it means to you to be inducted into the Hall of Fame of Netball Australia's. Oh, um, you know, really? I'm still trying to work that out. Um, you know, the, the Netball Australia Hall of Fame is, um, you know, an amazing master. The people that have preceded me onto the Hall of Fame, both in the, um, you know, coaching and playing categories, I think are people that many of whom I've admired from afar. Quite a few um, I have grown to know and love, and I've had the privilege of being associated with. Um, those people have had a tremendous influence on my life, and I am eternally grateful. So it, it feels like an, a tremendous privilege to be counted in that same category. It's not something I ever expected, it's not something I've looked for, but now that it's there, well, it feels good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's great. <laughs> we, we saw in the clip, from the moment you retired, you started to work with Indigenous kids to get them into netball, into mm -hmm. sport in particular, into physical mm -hmm. activity. Today, um, Netball Australia announced their mm -hmm. Reconciliation Action Plan. I know that behind the scenes you were also involved in, mm -hmm. in creating that. Mm -hmm. Tell me what your vision and what your dream is for young Indigenous netballers. Mm. I was I was hoping is that, that too I big? My vision for the diamonds. <laughs> I saw a beautiful black diamond tonight. I really like the look of that. <laughs> Like to see ten of them, perhaps. I have ten fingers, Phil. Um, I lost train of thought then. That's the question. After you oh. represented Australia, there's only been one other Indigenous netball player mm. to, to represent Australia. What, what would you hope to see for young kids, boys and girls out there, um, that are Indigenous in terms of netball? Uh, I'd love to see, you know, Aboriginal to Australia and the kids playing at all levels, you know, um, state level, um, in the ANZ Cup and of course at Diamonds. I'd love to see more Aboriginal kids running around playing park netball. Um, we actually, our participation isn't too bad in some areas. Um, I know, you know, I'm out at Heffron Park every Saturday and there's lots of kids that are closely connected to me and some that are not that connected to me but are part of our community. and. They're participating and, and they're brilliant and they love it and they bring all of their families and all of the culture and all of the wonderful things that we bring to the sport. But what I, I see also is a tremendous dropout rate that mm. far exceeds that of our peers. And what I'd love to see is that we have Aboriginal women all over the country that have been involved in netball for you know, like myself, 40 years or, or more, and that their children, like my children, are playing netball, and that I hope my grandchildren are going to play netball. Well, they are, in fact, playing netball. And I'd like to hear uh, stories like mine being repeated around the campfire when we're visiting country. I'd like to um, see an Aboriginal woman win the Liz Ellis Award, and hey, I'd like to see an Aboriginal Prime Minister, so... <laughs> like, like Norma, I wanted to give you the opportunity, um, you only get inducted into the Hall of Fame on one occasion, mm -hmm. um, so I wanted to give you the opportunity to also say some words. Okay. Hmm. Um, I think, first and foremost, I need to acknowledge the tremendous women that preceded me, both people that are part of my um, cultural heritage, my mother in particular, who is possibly the most humble person I have ever known in my life, but um, also the most influential and reliable person I've ever known in my life, and I'm delighted that my sister is here, um, who in a sense is one of my mothers, um, that she's here to share this tonight. And this sister in particular is the one that used to cart me from work to Anne Clark Centre to Canberra and back and fed me in between. So first and foremost, I'd like to thank my mothers, represented by my sister. <laughs> um, 
my poor husband. <laughs> He originally came to Nepal the pervert or the good sorts. <laughs> One of those good sorts had to marry him to keep us all safe. <laughs> I did. <laughs> My children, um, of course, who, poor babies, were dragged to Nepal every weekend and in fact, my poor oldest daughter, Lauren, I think she might be still psychologically recovering from <laughs> Carol Sykes ripping her from my breast. <laughs> Palming her to poor old Lee in the car, babysitting while I had to train again. Um, so certainly my daughters for, for persevering with me and for being with me tonight. I think, um, of course, what is really important to me are the coaches that I've had along the way and I've had just a, a handful of coaches that, um, you know, from nine to wherever I am now, we won't go there. <laughs> um, but of course there's um, Wilma Shakespeare, who is here, and I'm so thrilled to see her after such a long time, if not. But Lil Wilma was obviously very important and one of the dearest coaches. Um, Mari Kelly, who's a RAMIC rep, uh, president and um, has been part of my life since I was nine. Mari also had a very important role in my life. I think one of the people who had the most influence on me as a person and uh, helped me to learn how to love, win, love winning and to hate even more losing. Um, but, you know, really showed me the craftsmanship of forging a team out of a group of people and. You know, Carol Sykes is possibly one of those people that I hold dearest in my heart. Not least of um, which, the, I guess one of the reasons why I love Carol so much is because, you know, she didn't just form a team, she formed a union that really transcended the court and went off the court. And, and through that, I have uh, gained such a, a, a rich network of friends who, um, are reliable and there, even though we don't, you know, contact each other very much, but we love each other very much. And I'd like to thank them for being there for me and being part of who I am and where I am. Thank you, girls.